In 2002, the United States Congress initiated design and construction on the 580,000 square foot Capitol Visitor Center, the largest structural addition in the history of the U.S. Capitol since its conception. The Capitol building represents the foundation of our country. And in 1791, President Washington and Pierre L'Enfant laid out the city in a way that would reinforce the iconic symbolism of the building itself and we decided not to do anything that would take away from its iconic value at all. The capital had evolved over time, but it had never changed for the needs of the people. By the 90s, we had millions of visitors coming. We just weren't treating the visitors very well. The building is woefully inadequate to accommodate large numbers of people because it was designed as an office building. There was no place to eat in the building. There were no exhibits dedicated to telling the story of the Capitol and the Congress. The Visitor Center was designed for visitor comfort, security, education, and to increase the functionality of the facility. Visitors would be welcomed into the Capitol building in a whole new way. We built the Visitor Center to gracefully and gently and comfortably and respectfully welcome people to their Capitol building. Where do we put this new Capitol Visitor Center? How do you design a new building but not take away from the Capitol building's iconic significance for the country? That was a very, very important discussion from the very beginning of the design process. How do we make sure that the new building actually feels like an extension of the Capitol rather than just an addition to it? And that really led the design team to push this building underground so the Capitol building remains the destination. There was certainly that level of working very hard not to slow down the people's business, not to inconvenience the members or their staffs. We never had the luxury of moving Congress out of the Capitol. We never had the luxury of stopping the visiting public. We had to maintain access for the members of Congress and for the visiting public. The Capitol Visitor Center was built with Frederick Law Olmsted's vision for the Capitol grounds in mind. The grounds themselves are historic landmark designed by Frederick Law Olmsted, who also did Central Park in New York City. So the challenges were many, and we had to spend close to a year preparing the construction site for the construction itself. We did tree preservation, protected the Capitol building, and removed all the obstacles within the footprint, and we were able to start digging the ground. We had to remove the asphalt first, and we started excavation. We had to dig down essentially 70 feet immediately adjacent to the walls of the Capitol. One crack in a historic fresco, one crack in the dome could have stopped us dead in our tracks. In 2003, we expected to complete the excavation by around the late springtime, but uh, January and February, it started to rain, and I don't think it ever stopped the rest of the year. That, of course, came at the most critical time of the project, and 100 days worth of rain and mud uh, just slowed those operations down exponentially. By September of 03, we stopped digging down and we raised the first piece of steel on the site. It was a really monumental moment for us. Normally, uh, a building is built from its foundation up. You know, the roof is the last thing that you put on. But it was very important that we be able to have the roof on the visitor center for the inauguration of 2005. Instead of building from the bottom up, we had to work from the top down. We had to get enough structure in place where, on which we can start laying pavers in place near the face of the Capitol to allow some of the traditional activities that accompany the inauguration. It took an awful lot of creative thinking to try to figure out how to get this done. We excavated the whole erected steel columns that allow us to get the roof deck even before the intermediate slabs were in place. I remember the you know overwhelming sense of pride that we had been a part of this. It's just a feeling you can't describe uh, knowing that you have contributed. The Visitor Center preserves and maximizes public access to the Capitol while enhancing the experience for the millions who walk its historic corridors and experience the democratic process in action. 
a lot of people thought they would lose that connectivity to the Capitol because it was below ground. We wanted to make sure that the, the visitor center felt like an extension of the Capitol, so the skylights were very important from the beginning. We bathe the interior spaces with a lot of natural light. They also really serve to uh, reconnect you with the Capitol building itself. They frame some amazing views of the dome, and by doing that, it brings the dome closer to you. On December 2, 2008, the doors of the Capitol Visitor Center were open to the public for the first time. Certainly, there was a lot of excitement. Often, uh, people were talking about they couldn't wait to show their grandkids this. The Capitol Visitor Center has just greatly enhanced and enriched the experience of every visitor to the Capitol. I've seen kids really having fun, and I think that's a great way to get them thinking about their relationship to Congress. Today, the Visitor Center welcomes millions of visitors each year. It's just been a tremendous privilege to be a part of this historic project, to be part of something that has helped make the experience for the American people better, to help enhance their understanding of our democracy. As I walk through the Capitol Visitor Center today, I really think it's a magnificent and a remarkable ninth addition to the Capitol building. I think about how well it works uh, as I see people come through there, and I think about how many lives that are really affected by that experience when they come to the Capitol building. That's a really powerful influence, and I think, um, I think we've done a remarkable job at that.